Hello and welcome to Group 4's presentation. For today's discussion, we are going to tackle on microbial infections of the oral cavity. For our group, we are going to discuss mainly on the herpes virus. For today's discussion, we are going to cover five main areas that will help us understand the mechanisms behind these type of microbial disease. So before that, we are going to have a very short overview about what herpes virus is. This will be followed by its etiology, structure of an organism, pathophysiology, clinical manifestations, and its histologic examination. Herpes is a common virus that causes sores on your genitals and or mouth. Herpes is spread from skin-to-skin -skin contact with infected areas often during vaginal sex, oral sex, anal sex, and kissing. Herpes causes outbreaks of itchy, painful blisters or sores that come and go. First, we are going to talk about the etiology of herpes virus. The HSV, or commonly known as the herpes simplex virus, or herpes, is typically brought on by a highly contagious virus that spreads through intimate contact and interaction between people. Two viral subtypes are causing such infections, the herpes simplex virus type 1, which is transmitted orally or through direct lesion contact, and the type 2, which is transmitted through having sexual intercourse. These viruses can cause genital and oral herpes and are indeed the leading causes of these infections. The double-stranded DNA viruses, herpes simplex virus types 1 and 2, will result to chronic infections characterized by recurrent sickness and periods of quiescence. The virus can also be detected in genital secretions and other physiological fluids like mouth secretions, as well as in or near cold sores, shared personal items like cosmetics and eating utensils and oral secretions. If you have genital herpes while pregnant, there is a substantial likelihood that your unborn child will catch the virus from you both through the breast milk and contact with virus shed from the genital tract. The virus manifests symptoms as soon as it enters the body. Although these lesions can heal, this particular virus is linked to latent infection, which means it is a persistent infection that resides dormant in the sensory nerve ganglia and exhibits signs of asymptomatic behavior whenever it is in a state of inactivity. It can only be triggered and become symptomatic again when exposed to specific stimuli, thus reactivating the virus. Reactive incidents or reactivation of these virus can be caused by a number of causes. First is cold temperature, second is trauma, third is immune suppression, and fourth is coinciding illness. The herpes simplex virus is a member of the herpes viridae family of DNA viruses that cause viral infections in the majority of humans. It is much bigger in size compared to other viruses, measuring about 150 nanometers in diameter. Like other envelope-containing viruses, it is sensitive to solvents, acid, detergents, and drying. Its structure is composed of a large core containing a linear double-stranded DNA genome that codes for about 80 proteins, in which about half is involved in self-replication while the other half is involved with how the virus interacts with the host cell and the host immune system. The DNA genome is enclosed in an icosa delta hedron capsid structure, also known as a nucleocaspid, that is composed of 162 capsomeres. The nucleocaspid is surrounded by an amorphous protein coat called the tegument, that holds viral enzymes and proteins that help begin the replication process inside the host cell. The whole structure is encased by a lipid bilayer envelope containing glycoproteins, which help the virus attach to their host, fuse with the host membrane, and escape controlled by the host immune system. Flashed on the screen are images obtained from the lens of a microscope with figure A representing two color direct stochastic optical reconstruction microscopy images, or in short, D-storm images, that illustrate the virus particles 
as well as exposing the position of its protein layers. Labeling of the tegument and the envelope is shown in the top panel. While illustrated in the bottom panel, we have the labeling of the two tegument proteins. In figure B, we have a four-color imaging of the herpes simplex virus 1 within a fixed HFF TERT cell with the nucleus indicated by a dashed line. And as for figure C, images shown are capsid positive virus particles that are observed within the cells which exhibit the presence or absence of the envelope. The entry of HSV1 and HSV2 into the body through the skin includes effusion of the virus with the host cell, penetrating and fusing its envelope with the cell membrane. The viral ca capsid is released into the cell's cytoplasm. This process allows replication of the virus in the epithelial cells and mucous membranes, initially initiating primary infection. Production of virons in this sites cause vesicular lesions in the epithelium. The virus eventually spreads to an adjacent sensory neuron that innervates these sites. Through retrograde transport, the virus is transported along axons from the sensory neurons into the sensory ganglia. Approximately three weeks after the exposure of the virus to the body, the epithelial infection comes to a resolution. There is a replication of the virus in the sensory ganglia, establishing a latent infection. In HSV1 infections, the virus occurs latency in the trigeminal ganglia. In HSV2 infections, the virus achieves latency in the sacral ganglia. During latency, the viral genome remains in the nucleus of the neuron for life. However, there is an absence of viral proteins which stops the movement and infectious properties of the virus. Reactivation of HSV may be triggered by specific stimuli such as cold temperature and trauma. Since HSVs have certain mechanisms that escape immune host recognition, it can reactivate even in the presence of host immunity. Without proper recognition, HSVs can easily reactivate and proliferate. In this process, virions are then transported back to the epithelium or mucous membranes through anterograde transport. Epithelial cells are then reinfected, causing lesions in the epithelium. Herpes virus patients may not present any visible physical symptoms. However, there are some presentations that the patient may encounter. Herpes virus comes in different types and may present specific manifestations, and our group has categorized them into their respective general presentations. One type of herpes known for source is the herpes simplex virus. The herpes simplex virus is divided into HSV type 1 and HSV type 2. HSV type 1, also known as oral herpes, presents blisters on the lips or mouth. It could also develop in the cheeks or the tongue. As for HSV type 2, it forms in the genitalia. They are sores on the penis, vagina, buttocks, or anus, and as a result, this could lead to urinary problems, as those who have genital herpes may find it difficult or they may feel a burning sensation whenever a need to urinate arises. Occasionally, HSV may affect the eyes. This is also known as herpes keratitis. This is caused by HSV type 1 and it usually occurs when a previous infection with the virus reactivates and spreads to the eye. Another type of herpes virus is the varicella zoster virus, more specifically, herpes zoster virus. Varicella basically means chicken pox, so a physical manifestation of the variant includes blisters and sores. However, this time around, they present in the skin, differing from HSV, which only develop orally or in the genitalia. Next off is the cytomegalovirus, CMV, and the Epstein-Barr virus, EBV. 
both manifest flu-like symptoms. CMV is a widespread, generally harmless virus. However, the virus remains in your body for the rest of your life after you've contracted it. These include muscles, muscle aches, fever, skin rash, sore throat, and swollen lymph nodes, usually in the glands. As for EPV, this is commonly known as a human herpes virus 4, they frequently occur in children. It may be asymptomatic, however, if they do present, it is usually like those transient childhood diseases. By transient, it means it's fleeting, temporary. The symptoms are similar to cytomegalovirus, however, the infected person is most likely to have a swollen liver and enlarged spleen. Human herpes virus 6 or double-stranded DNA virus which belongs to the herpes variety family. It is a double-stranded linear DNA virus surrounded by a nicosedral capsid which is a spiral protein shell. It is the cause of the common childhood disease called raziola and phantom also known as exanthema sibidium or 6 disease. It affects children under 2 years of age or infants which is also called raziola in phantom. The disease spreads through airborne respiratory droplets and can be easily transmitted by cuddling or kissing. Once the virus enters the body, it replicates in the peripheral blood mononuclear cells. The clinical manifestations of HHV6 are fever, fussiness, diarrhea, rash, and raziola syndrome. The human herpes virus 7, a herpes virus that causes seizures and other central nervous symptoms in children. Abbreviated HHV7, closely related to HHV6, has also linked to raziola. Human herpes virus 8, also called Kaposi's sarcoma azosia herpes virus or KSHV, belongs to the family of human gamma herpes viruses. HHV8 is one of the seven known oncoviruses meaning the viruses that can cause cancer in people, specifically HHV-8 causes Kaposi sarcoma, usually seen in individuals with AIDS. The clinical manifestations are fever, mild upper respiratory symptoms, and a mucopapular rash. Histologic examination of herpes virus. The low power pattern of a typical lesion is of an intrapedermal blister. The key feature is acantylosis with solitary keratinocytes within the blister cavity. Keratinocytes will show nuclear changes in the viral infection. This included margination of the nuclear chromatin, multinucleation, and nuclear inclusions. The viral inclusions are small pink deposits with a clear halo seen within the nucleus. When present in herpes virus infection and present with the other nuclear changes of this infection, they are now called as dowry A, type A inclusions. Cowdery type B inclusions are associated with other infections such as polyvirus and do not have other nuclear changes in herpes infection. During the early changes of vacuolation in the cytoplasm, it may be seen along the basal keratinocytes. As the cells swell and separate, the cytoplasm become eosinophilic, particularly notable in the multinucleated cells. The inflammatory infiltrate is mixed predominantly with lymphocytes and neutrophils that is scattered with eosinophils frequently seen. And that sums up our discussion for today, and we hope that you gain something out from the information that we provided. Thank you so much for listening.